If you think corporations bought free speech before Now that they're human, they'll buy even more well, Welcome to Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. This cable access program is part of our effort to create a just society based on an equitable, sustainable economy. Today our guest is Jeff Holland. Jeff is an author as well as a producer living here in Portland. He has recently produced some videos advocating support for Move to Men, movetomen.org. So I want to welcome Jeff Holland. Thank you, David. Uh, you wrote a book several years ago. Uh, tell us what the title of the book was uh, and what book, it was about. Uh, the book was titled The Hydrogen Age, and it, it was really a book more about renewable energy and moving, transitioning away from uh, dirty fuels, fossil fuels, coal, oil, and, and natural gas, uh, and nuclear, uh, uh, to an era where we get all our energy basically from uh, the sun and from wind uh, and sources that don't cause pollution. And they're basically inexhaustible mm -hmm. uh, in supply. And hydrogen is a, a key part of that because hydrogen can be used as an energy carrier uh, that's available on demand. You can use electricity generated from solar and wind resources and so forth uh, to split water molecules and then you can you uh, you, uh, you can save the hydrogen uh, and use it when you want to uh, to heat homes, to generate electricity uh, and to power vehicles and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I remember some discussion I'm going to say six or seven years ago about actually um, producing a, a hydrogen highway uh, that well, that, that's actually happening in Europe right now. Uh, the the uh, many European countries are spending significant billions of, of euros uh, to build out the infrastructure so that they can have fueling stations for automobiles and and trucks and so forth that run on hydrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's a it's a highly efficient way of, of doing business and um, the, the cost of the fuel once you get the, the whole thing going uh, it is pretty constant because you're, you're getting your electricity more or less for free from the sun and from the wind and once you have the hardware in place to, to, uh, to transition uh, that kind of energy into electrons and, and then hydrogen, uh, it's, it's a very low cost to keep mm -hmm. it going. Okay. Uh, do, do you know if there are actually any efforts in the United States anymore to, to, well, there, do, to there was start a lot using of, it? There was, you know, I, spent, I started this in the 90s, and when I started, there was a lot of effort from the Department of Energy to do this. But what happened, has happened since then is that uh, big energy, uh, coal and oil, uh, natural gas, and uh, nuclear, have basically taken over control of the uh, government's energy policy. Uh, they put their police people in place in the Department of Energy, uh, and the, the people who run, uh, who make our energy policy in Congress are basically bought and paid for uh, by the fossil fuel industry. So they get what they want, and they funnel the money uh, into their work so that they can continue generating profits. And it's, uh, it's not a very smart way to do business, but that's what we have right now. Mm -hmm. Right, and so I, I, that, that's a perfect transition then into your next endeavor, which has been uh, producing these uh, videos to uh, advocate for amending the U.S. Constitution. Well, that, that's right. I spent a lot of time focused on uh, uh, renewable energy, renewable energy. But what we found was that. The whole thing has been undermined by people who don't want that to happen because it threatens their profits. Um, and, and it's not people. It's corporations and wealthy people. I mean, right. the Koch brothers are an example. Of, they mm -hmm. have a huge investment in the tar sand to, uh, up in Canada, and uh, they, they have thrown a lot of their money into uh, managing the political process so they can get the policy they want. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, and so, talk, talk about talk about the videos that you've been producing. Well, uh, what's happened in the last year is uh, we started looking at doing uh, short videos uh, about 
uh, that would focus on move to amend because uh, ultimately what I came to the conclusion was the only way to move us in the right direction for the future uh, is to embrace a, 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 a real fundamental change in the way we do government and in order to do that you have to start by changing the Constitution so that corporations and the rich cannot use their wealth and their influence to manipulate public policy for their own, own interests. We need to have uh, the ability, we need to go back to the ability to have people, to elect people who will actually represent the interests of the people uh, in getting uh, the public's business done. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that right now. It's, Okay. Yeah, and, and the and what stands between the public's interest being represented in government, of course, is the expenditure of this vast sums of money in our elections. That's right. And you, uh, it, you, you, it, it was totally on display in this last election. We just had an election last week, a midterm election for 2014, and it was a debacle uh, mm -hmm. with Republicans being elected uh, on the national level and also uh, on the state level uh, to a large degree. And it, it was a combination of things, but the biggest factor was the huge, huge amounts of money that were being put into the pro political process by uh, wealthy people and corporations so that they could get the people in office that they want who will basically do what they want. I mean, they want climate deniers in Congress uh, so that we, you know, they can justify not doing anything about transitioning away from dirty fuels. Mm -hmm. So what do we have? Uh, we have two people now running uh, in the House of Representatives and the Congress, uh, in the Senate, running the committees that are in charge of climate policy that are absolute climate deniers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as long as you have a situation where that kind of thing can happen, you're not going to get anything close to effective policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and so uh, move to amend. What, what does move to amend advocate? Well, move to amend is it's a very simple paradigm. We change the constitution, so corporations are not treated as people, and money is not treated as speech. Now, what's interesting about that is there's never been a law that's been passed. Uh, that says corporations are people. It's not in the Constitution. In fact, the Founding Fathers warned us about the potential of abuse from uh, corporate interests. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's happened is the, the courts, conservative judges on the Supreme Court, starting in the late 19th century, have manipulated uh, their decisions so that legal precedent said that corporations are considered persons under the law and money is treated as speech. Uh, nothing, no law has been passed. It's all been done with legal precedent, mm -hmm. uh, which is an egregiously, uh, egregious abuse of uh, uh, judicial power. But that's the way it is. And we have that right now. We have a five to four majority, a conservative majority on the Supreme Court that are basically there to uh, enact uh, policy that supports big business and, and the wealthy. Mm -hmm. So the wealthy and the corporations, and when we're talking about corporations, we're not talking about the mom and pop operations. No, we're talking no. about the multinationals no. and the nationals. This is not, uh, I mean, this is not a fight against uh, biz business or even corporations. It's a battle against a, uh, the multinationals, the largest the big bankers, uh, the big oil companies, uh, uh, big corporations that basically use their incredible wealth to manipulate public policy by buying politicians mm -hmm. uh, and uh, by putting people in place in, in the regulatory part of the government uh, that will uh, provide the policy that they want. So mm -hmm. that's why we don't have effective an effective energy policy in this country. Mm -hmm. We don't have an effective way of dealing with climate change because the people who are in charge don't want that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so your your vision of our present situation would be, I, I think I could summarize it as saying that the wealthy uh, and these multinational corporations have essentially come to control the legislative process, the yes. agencies that are supposed to be regulating in our interest yes. as well as the judiciary. Yes. Okay. And the media. 
and the media. And you can even make a case that they have taken over control of the highest levels of uh, the military as well. Mm -hmm. Because a big part of the problem is the military-industrial complex, which Eisenhower warned us about uh, uh, when he was uh, the president. Yeah. Um, they basically want to keep making their weapons, so they they pick, they have a wonderful way of finding of, of being able to pick, uh, helping their government pick fights with other countries. So we put huge amounts of money into weapon systems, uh, uh, to and they keep making their huge profits. Right. Yeah. So we we could we could. Uh, talk about that one for a long time yes. but but let's let's actually take a, a moment and watch one of the videos that sure. you produced this changes everything is really about this central tension we have between an economic model that is built to facilitate short-term profits and uh, and growth and a and a, a planet, a, a biosphere that is overloaded. The industry at the heart of this, the fossil fuel industry and the banks that underwrite that industry are so powerful because of uh, how intensely profitable this economic model is. They've essentially merged with government. We can get off that road, we can veer, but that requires changing our economic system. And we can only do that if we change our political system. You know, we need to transform on every level, but underneath all of that, we need to, we need to confront the outsized power of, of money in politics so that those other changes are possible. Yeah, I call the book This Changes Everything because um, we have procrastinated for so long in the face of the climate crisis that there are no now no non-radical options uh, in front of us. If we stay on the road we're on, then everything changes about our physical world and not in a good way. Important. I do think it is important to address campaign law, mm -hmm. but I do. But but we also need to address co corporate personhood. Um, I don't think we can get around that. Um, so we have to have a holistic approach to. To, to these various problems. I don't think there is a silver bullet. Um, I think we, we, need to, um, we need to look at, at, at both the campaign finance um, and, and corporate personhood as well. To move to amend is, is a key part of, of a series of actions that we need to take to get money out of politics. Jeff, uh, having watched that, first of all, tell us who, who is Naomi Klein. Uh, Naomi Klein is a, a, a reporter, a journalist, and author. Uh, she wrote a book called The Shock Doctrine about, oh, eight or ten years ago, something like that, that, talk, that focused on predatory capitalism. The problem is not markets and capitalism. The problem is the way we do capitalism in this country. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's become some, a, a game where... Uh, profit is the bottom line, and uh, the people who are in charge of corporations are selected for their ability to generate profit and nothing else. Uh, and whatever gets in the way, uh, because of the nature of these people, they, they will push it aside or use whatever uh, influence they have to uh, avoid uh, uh, missing some of their profits. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, that I mean, ba basically, that's what it's about. Okay. Uh, all right. And, and, and why was her endorsement of Move to Mend important? Well, she, she wrote this book basically that connected climate change to the nature of the way politics are done in this country. This I mean, changes everything. This changes everything. Yes. That, that's the name of the book. This changes everything. And what it does uh, is it connects climate change, the issue of climate change. She's a board member of 350.org. And she is uh, very passionate about dealing with this issue, which we all should be. Uh, and she basically has come to the conclusion that the only way to solve the problem ultimately is to fundamentally change the way we do our government. Uh, and uh, I contacted her publicist when I found out she was going to be here in Portland to do a book signing. And I was lucky enough to be able to arrange a, an interview. We got 10 minutes with her. And we created this little video and it, where she endorses what Move to Amend is all about. Mm -hmm. 
and, and talk specifically about corporate personhood and money as speech. That's really the core issue. That's, that's the bottom line. If you want to change the world into something that's going to be good for, for people in the future, you've got to get control of the way we do our government. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so, uh, so move to amend identifies two issues. One is the corporate personhood and the other is the money in, yes. in the political system. Right. Um, and they say that they want to have a constitutional um, 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 amendment right. that says that corporations are not people and that money is not speech. That's right. Uh, so if corporations are not people, will we need to, well, will corporations continue to be able to exist? Absolutely. They, I mean, that's what, you I mean, Germany is a country that is probably as economically competitive as any country in the world. And in Germany, they don't have corporations as people. And, and the, the, they have a completely different structure for their boards of directors. They include labor on their boards. They include uh, representation from the communities where th they actually have their businesses located. Uh, and that's the way it should be. It shouldn't just be about generating profits. Mm -hmm. uh, co boards should not be cabals of individuals who are feeding at the trough and making money and are not interested in anything else. Mm -hmm. we, we need to have, uh, uh, corporations need to be uh, managed in a way that they look out for the interests of not only their shareholders, but also the public in general. Yeah, and we had a, a program recently uh, that we did about B corporations, public benefit corporations, mm -hmm. uh, which which uh, try to do that mm -hmm. here in the United States. What's notable about that is that those are special corporations. But what you're really suggesting, and the German model suggests, is that corporations should always have a long-term. Uh, set of social responsibilities. It, it shouldn't be just about profit. Mm -hmm. right. It needs to be, corporations need to serve the interests of the community and generate profit at the same time. I mean, that's when they, when the whole thing about with corporations began, that was the purpose, to do public works that, that couldn't be managed in any other way. But uh, they, it, the, the, the plan always was for, for corporations to be legal fictions that would serve the interests of the of the public and generate profit at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now they they're only interested in profit, nothing else. Right. Yeah. So so what you're saying is corporations originally had obligations yes. to all of us. That's right. And what over the period of uh, since the founding of our nation they have moved uh, from having obligations uh, to uh, being very privileged. Well, you know. To having been, rights. It's been going on for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the robber baron era in the 19th century is a perfect example of that. People like J.P. Morgan and, and uh, 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 Carnegie and, and some of the others who uh, amass huge amounts of wealth, they use that money to manipulate the, the uh, political process. Mm -hmm. So this is nothing new. And Teddy Roosevelt recognized that uh, uh, right at the beginning of the 20th century when he was uh, uh, one of the most important public figures in American life. And he tried to do something about it. Uh, so this fight is not new, but it's never been completely resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, Roosevelt, uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, made uh, some big inroads during the Depression because things got so bad because of of uh, bad behavior uh, by uh, corporate interests mm -hmm. that um, there was no other choice but to if we're going to bring these people back online and provide jobs again they had to do something and he really made a difference mm -hmm. okay so, so do you think that we need to have another teddy roosevelt or, oh. or, or, or uh, franklin roosevelt I, I actually either one of those <laughs> I, I would i would love to see that mm -hmm. uh, uh I, I only see two politicians in, in, in national public life right now that uh, are really on that level and i think bernie sanders the independent from vermont Senator, senator. Mm -hmm. and Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts, uh, are the only two that really stand out. Uh, I'm not saying they're the only ones, but they really put themselves out there and present themselves as champions uh, for uh, this kind of populist 
governments, a, gov a form of governance that, that we need. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so what we're really talking about is a form of governance that uh, puts government above corporations instead of the other way around. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. And Bernie Sanders certainly has spoken to those issues. Yes. And Elizabeth Warren has also. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders is sounding like he's at least exploring the possibility of running. I think he is going to run. Mm -hmm. uh, bec I th it, not that he has a big chance of winning. It looks to me like the, all the momentum is for Hillary Clinton. But what he could do and, or, or, and Elizabeth Warren could do is if they got into the, uh, into the 2016 presidential race, they could push Hillary more toward uh, the progressivism that reflects what the Democratic base is all about. And you can make a case that the reason that we only had a 37 percent turnout in this last election is because a huge portion of the Democratic uh, electorate didn't go to the polls mm -hmm. because they're fed up with the system as it is. Now, an interesting aspect of that is, on the other side of that coin, is there were are s several states, Wisconsin and uh, Massachusetts are two, uh, that were, were a number of communities had ballot measures in support of Move to Amend's initiative to, to end corporate personhood and money as speech. And in those places, even though in some of those states they elected Republicans, they also supported by a huge margin the initiatives that Move to Amend supports. Mm -hmm. This is why I, I'm optimistic that if we can just get, elevate the dialogue and get people aware of what Move to Amend is all about, that we can, we can build a, a grassroots movement to really make a fundamental change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I would point out that those successes at the polls were uh, West Coast, Central United States, and East Coast, there That's was, right. uh, and it was conservatives that voted for those initiatives mm -hmm. too. Uh, right, yeah, and, and I, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because this truly is a not a bipartisan issue. It this shouldn't is a be. Nonpartisan issue. It shouldn't be. What what you have is when all this money is is in the uh, in the system manipulating people. Uh, you've got poor people who are voting ag uh, against their own interest because they just don't know any better and mm -hmm. they're being told and, and like, as I said manipulated with, can't, with commercials and so forth to think things are, are one way when they are actually another. I mean uh, the, the Republican uh, approach to this last election was to make a big thing, uh, a, a scare thing about Ebola uh, and, and, and so forth and, and, uh, and ISIS when those threats are really minimal compared to some of the other dangers that we face and we're not dealing with like mm -hmm. climate change. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, th there is uh, this constant effort to divert our attention from from the important issues. Yes. Uh, and unfortunately, because the major media, the corporate media, is on board with this program, uh, they facilitate that uh, very well. <laughs> That's their game. Right. Because if if they were really going to uh, focus on the issues that are important to you and I and folks that uh, are like us, they would be focusing on the sources of inequality, for instance. Yes. Uh, why would, are would, there so many poor people? What happened to the economy? Why are we constantly at war? And what's the effect of that, for instance? We would have public instance? policy that reflects the best interests of all the people, not just the s a small number of people at the top. Yes. But what we have right now is all the wealth is being funneled to a very, very small number of people at the top, and everybody else is being left behind because they have nobody advocating for them in, in mm -hmm. the government. Right, yeah. Do you think that if we were, if Bernie Sanders were to run, uh, and even less probable if he were actually to win, that it would make a whole lot of difference uh, if he also you know, wasn't accompanied by a lot of other Frankly, uh, folks I, no. being, being elected? Uh, the, the answer to that is no. I think you cannot really have the kind of change that we need without addressing the issue of corporate personhood and money as speech. Mm -hmm. uh, be, money is, should be treated as property, uh, not as speech. Just because you have money doesn't give you the right to manipulate our political process with it. You know, I, I'm not against people have, uh, being rich. I mean, uh, although I think there's a limit to where that should be. Uh, uh, 
but I also think that because you have wealth, you shouldn't have the right to be better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, the government should be representing the interests of all the people and also protecting the environment that we all depend on. This is the only earth we have, and we're, we're wrecking it uh, because we're focused on profit rather than preservation. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Well, uh, we are just about uh, we are just about done. So you, you definitely would direct people to the Move to Amend uh, website. And Absolutely. To I, I think that Everybody needs to recognize that this is, needs to be part of, of, of uh, any effort that they want to make towards solving the problems. If they, whatever individual problems that they're focused on, if it's women's rights, if it's, uh, if it's uh, LBGT rights, uh, 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 reproductive freedom, uh, uh, climate change, whatever issues that you care about, the ultimate solution lies with the fundamental change in the way we do political business. And the uh, move to amend, I think, is right there. I mean, with, with the, it's, a, it's such a very simple paradigm and plan that they put on the table. Uh, I, and the thing that scares me is that there are a number of other constitutional uh, uh, initiatives out there that focus only on campaign law. And, and, and that's, that, that if, even if we did, we wasted all our energy focusing on that kind of an amendment, it would only take us back maybe where it was 15 years ago. Wouldn't not solve the problem. Right. You know, the, the, the reason we had such a fight with the to big tobacco for so long is because they were able to, to basically obfuscate and lie about the real impact of tobacco on people's lives because they could claim personhood. Right, yeah. Well, uh, we could explore that one a whole lot more. Yes. However, our time is up, so I want to thank you very much for being thank here, you, Jeff. Thank you, David. Good. That's uh, I am sorry to say at this point, uh, but this will be one of our last Populist Dialogue programs uh, because we are going to go off the air. Uh, we will continue to do uh, programs from time to time. And if you like watching Populist Dialogues, I would encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, uh, which is youtube.com slash Populist Dialogues, and click the subscribe button. That way you'll get an email notification when we do put up another new program. Uh, Populist Dialogues has been a project of the Alliance for Democracy Portland. You can learn more about us at afd-pdx.org or our national organization at thealliancefordemocracy.org. So I want to thank Joan Horton, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas for their volunteer time getting us on the air. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Thank you. And I hope that we will be seeing you again. If you think corporations bought free speech before, now that they're human, they'll buy even more. Yeah, their money has free speech to me, quite a shock. Because I never heard my money talk.